Lee Chess is a chess platform that supports 5.2 million chess games a day with a single core developer. It's a massive platform built with a pretty unusual stack, including some technologies that you may have never heard of, like Scala and Snapdom. This is an incredibly productive developer, and the technology plays at least a small part in enabling these massive gains. Before we dive into the stack, let me share a short anecdote to set the landscape for online chess. This is Vladimir Kramnik. He defeated Kari Kasparov to become the world chess champion in 2000 and defended that title to remain the best player in the world until 2006. At his peak, he was the undisputed best player in the world. But lately, he's better known for the accusations he makes on Twitter. After comparing the over-the-board and online statistics of some high-rated players, he came to the conclusion that they must be cheating, eventually resulting in a tournament called the Clash of Claims. After Kramnik accused Grandmaster Jose Martinez of cheating, Chess.com offered to be part of a tournament where they would play over the board and online games to determine whether Martinez was in fact cheating. Obviously, this tournament is completely useless because people who are good at something can still cheat, but everyone agreed to go ahead with it anyway with a few conditions. Very concerned about cheating, Kramnik demanded that brand new laptops be opened every morning before the online games. Because of the way time zones were configured on the brand new laptops, the chess clock, which is just a simple countdown timer shown on Kramnik's screen, was off by over 30 seconds. This makes a huge difference in a three minute game. There are many systems we could blame for this issue. The operating system, JavaScript, time zones, all of these are terrible error prone things that we have created. But because it fits my narrative, I'm going to say that one of the 138 engineers working at chess.com should have been able to wrangle these three systems together and create a working timer, especially since the single engineer who built Lee Chess doesn't have this issue. Chess.com is the biggest chess platform in the world. It is a multi-million dollar company with over 700 employees. Users can play a variety of chess modes online, request an engine review of their games, complete puzzles, analyze positions using an engine, and play against AI. Most of these features are freemium and will be limited without a monthly membership. Lee Chess is the second biggest chess platform. It is an open source hobby project created by Thibaut Duplessis. On Lee Chess, users can play a variety of chess modes online, request an engine review of their games, complete puzzles, analyze positions, and play against AI, all completely for free. Now, it's not like he's done this all by himself, right? Well, honestly, he kind of has. The core repository has 430 contributors, but a quick look at the contribution graph shows that this man is the single driving force behind Lee Chess. For years, his was the only salary paid for by the Lee Chess organization, a very modest salary given the quality of his work. Today, Lee Chess pays two salaries, one for Tibor and one for someone to maintain the mobile application. This is incredible impressive. One core developer supports 5.2 million chess games a day. Including the two mentioned salaries, Lee Chess costs 517,085 American dollars and 10 cents a year to run. The stack is Scala, MongoDB, Snapdom, TypeScript and SAS, which all run on a bare metal server in France. This is not a very common stack, but with such a small team creating such a massive product, Tibor has prioritized small, simple tools that focus on long-term developer experience and give the best value for money. Scala is the language that powers most of Lee Chess. It was chosen because it is strongly typed, expressive, high-level, functional, and has the ability to leverage the massive JVM ecosystem. Scala is not a popular choice by any stretch of the imagination. I would wager that a significant number of viewers would have never heard of Scala, and an even fewer number ever written it. Scala is a response to the issues commonly found in Java, mainly too much boilerplate and the lackluster type system. It aims to be succinct with better support for functional patterns, while still being compatible with the JVM. It is expressive, scalable, and safe. It supports both object orientation and functional programming. It is extremely concise, and its type system is a huge improvement over other JVM languages. 
I still can't believe that Java and Kotlin both have no union types. Scala also has the nice enums that can store values and be used for pattern matching. It shares many features with popular functional languages like currying, immutability, lazy evaluation, and pattern matching. You can think of Scala as a middle ground between Haskell and Java Kotlin, or as Haskell with more side effects. The name Scala comes from scalable language. This is a language that is designed to grow with the needs of its users. Here's what Tibor has to say about why he chose Scala. First of all, it is strongly typed. Emphasis on strongly. Then, Scala has decent support for functional programming. No mutability, no side effects. Since Leeches is a big beast, we don't have a lot of manpower, and I'm not the brightest star, we then need a lot of help from the language and compiler in order to scale in complexity. Scala gives us that. Haskell has similar properties but Scala runs on the JVM and benefits from the entire Java ecosystem, and that's what made the difference. Tibor has said that if he had to start over, he would seriously consider Haskell, but he originally chose Scala because of the JVM and would likely make the same choice today. Haskell is an excellent language that, much like Scala, is also strongly typed, expressive, high-level, and functional. Each of these requirements helps the tiny team deliver a huge product. The strong type system allows for easy, carefree refactoring. Expressive syntax allows for features to be developed with less code. The functional paradigm reduces side effects, which keeps code clear and easy to reason about. Leeches uses the Play framework. This is an MVC framework specifically for Scala applications, but Tibor has mentioned that this is one of the technologies that he regrets adopting. Leela is built on the Play framework. It made sense originally to speed up development with a cohesive and opinionated set of libraries that work together, a framework. But as years went and Leela got bigger, it outgrew the framework, and we would now be better off with smaller, independent libraries that we can swap as needed. So instead of a framework, I would now be looking at one library for HTTP, another one for routing, another one for HTTP forms, JSON, and so on. MongoDB is a very flexible document storage database. If you haven't heard of MongoDB before, it's basically like storing JSON objects in a queryable way. MongoDB is a database that does this in a resilient and efficient way. It makes it very easy to get started, since you don't have to think about database modeling as you would in a relational database. You save your objects, usually exactly as they are in your code, and the database manages for related queries. Leeches chose Mongo because it is fast, robust, easy to use, and has good compression. Its biggest disadvantage is that it can be very expensive. I know firsthand that MongoDB Atlas can come with crippling costs, especially with a growing data set. And although storage is still the biggest server expense, the fact that Leeches is self-hosted helps mitigate this cost. Document storage works well for chess games, although Tibor feels that MongoDB itself is not a key to his success. MongoDB is serving us well, and I'm happy with it. It's currently juggling with 5.5 billion games and about 15 billion other documents, and serving tens of thousands of queries per second. It's fast, compresses the data, and replicates seamlessly for redundancy and data safety. Its aggregation framework allows for complex data queries that LeechS needs. If we had to remake that choice, we would probably go for PostgreSQL, because it can also do all that and it's released under an open source license. Choosing between document storage and a relational database is a personal and semi-permanent choice. They can both serve most applications, so choose whatever you're most comfortable with. Migrations are very painful, but NoSQL and SQL are both extremely versatile. Leeches also uses Redis to communicate between services. Most notably, the WebSocket service saves events to a Redis cache, which are then read by the core service, which is named Leela. We'll talk about the overall architecture a little later, but it is not a single single monolith and it's not all microservices. I can't confirm since the deployment of Leela is not public, but I have a feeling that this Redis cache is what allows Leeches to be deployed multiple times a week without downtime, since the WebSocket connections can keep state in the cache which can be read by the new version. 
Given Tibor has mentioned he prefers static typing, it shouldn't be much of a surprise that the front end of LeechS uses TypeScript. TypeScript provides a strong type system for the front end. Much like the back end, this allows for easy refactoring and maintenance, since the compiler is doing a lot of the heavy lifting for you. For a long time, LeechS was using Mithril.js, a tiny JS framework with a focus on simplicity. Due to its growing complexity, they eventually moved to SnapDOM, a virtual DOM library with an even greater focus Focus on simplicity. Here's what Tibor had to say about front-end frameworks. Oh my, did I love Mithril. It's such a breath of fresh air. Virtual DOM done right, simple, and a beautiful API. Fast pastime and runtime. The love story lasted a couple years. Then I realized that SnapDOM was pushing it all a bit further. Simpler, smaller, faster. Mithril 2 improved performance, but at the cost of complexity, using element caches. I'm glad that SnapDOM didn't go that way. It makes it more stable and predictable. Most popular front-end frameworks and libraries come packed with features, not all of which you always need. Some of these features usually include state management, life cycle methods, JSX syntax, and a virtual DOM. Snap DOM takes an unopinionated approach. The core module comes with a great virtual DOM and nothing else. It's dead simple, but it's also extremely fast and versatile. All the extra functionality that you are forced to use with other libraries can be opted into by adding modules. It's usually not reasonable to use raw JavaScript or raw jQuery, especially for big projects. Snap DOM gives you the most important part of the big framework, the virtual DOM, without the massive dependencies that usually come bundled in. This shows how important simplicity is to LeechS, especially on the front end, where things Things can get out of hand fast. While many front-end developers tend to add dependencies to try and solve issues, Tibor is actively trying to reduce them, even when the existing framework is one of the smallest frameworks available. LeechS's front-end is by no means perfect, but the bland look is an intentional choice by the developer, rather than a limitation of a project's dependencies. Even Tibor admits that there is a lot to improve on, but he chooses to focus on UX instead of UI, since that is more important. I did most of the UI myself. I'm a programmer, not a designer. That's why it's always been quite bland with no images and very little colors. I made up for my lack of UI skills by focusing on UX, user experience, and I think it paid off. LeechS uses SAS to manage CSS, although Tibor isn't thrilled with it. SAS is annoying, but that's just because CSS is annoying. I wonder if he would like Tailwind. It seems like a natural complement to his current stack, although I've never seen him comment on it. The LeechS architecture can be described as a monolith with satellites. The main server, Leela, is a massive monolith. Some smaller services, like Stockfish Analysis and WebSockets, are split into separate servers. This is not a state of transition. This is a great way to leverage the strengths and weaknesses of both monoliths and microservices. Leela comes with the convenience of a monolith. It's convenient because all the state is in one place and can be cached in heap for all modules of the site to use, which makes it very efficient and quick at runtime. Everything compiles as a single unit, which ensures that the entire site is coherent and free of incompatibilities. The disadvantage is that it becomes a single point of failure for the whole system. Tibor splits part of the code that they would like to deploy separately into their own servers so that they can be deployed and even fail without affecting the most important servers. The current state of things is a result of years of evolution. There was no master plan. We just looked at monitoring to figure out what needed scaling. I like where it's at, but to be honest, I'm biased by the fact that it's the only large codebase I've been working on for years. So I lack experience with different ways of doing things that I could compare it to. Maybe being able to deploy Leela over multiple servers for resilience would be nice, but then we'd lose the ability to cache in heap because proper cache and validation across multiple instances would be impossible. The performance and complexity implications have deterred me from trying it out so far. That's right, Leela runs on a single server, managed by a company called OVH. A single server means that all the state can be stored in memory, allowing processing to be much faster. Lag can play an important role in chess games, especially when flagging in bullet. 
Leeches addresses this with lag compensation and optimistic client-side rendering, which means that even here in Australia, the experience is fluid. The solution only works because chess is a turn-based game, but Leeches can leverage the simplicity of a single server to be very performant. Here is the architecture of Leeches. All the grey boxes are physical server computers in a data center. The Leeches team manages everything on these computers, down to what Linux distribution is installed. They used to use Arch Linux, but migrated to Ubuntu, although distributions also seem to be something that isn't really important. Yes, the applicative and database servers used to run on Arch Linux, like four years ago. Every software upgrade was quite scary, and we had some downtime. Absolutely not blaming Arch for this. It's a great distribution that I'm still happily running on my laptop. It's just not the best choice for servers. Nowadays, Leeches servers run on Ubuntu. It could be Debian just the same, but we keep installing Ubuntu for the sake of consistency. Manta is the biggest machine and runs the main monolith. Around this is the other services and many database replicas. There isn't a lot of information about the deployment process of the mono repo, but we can see from some of the microservices that they try to keep things as simple as possible. This is obvious when looking at the deployment script for Leela WS which is arguably the second most important service. It's just a script that uses rsync to dump the files on the new server and then SSHs into it to deploy the new version. Some of these side services use other languages when necessary. The red services are written in Scala, while the orange ones are written in Rust. The Rust services are usually smaller services with high performance requirements. Leeches is a web app, but it also has an Android and iOS application. This is the only part of the system that has a separate dedicated developer salary. The mobile app used to use Ionic Capacitor, but the team decided to move to Flutter and recreate a whole dedicated application to provide a better user experience. Using Flutter makes sense for this team since it is open source and multi-platform. This project is much more than the sum of its technologies. Tools aren't everything. This project succeeded not because of its stack, but because of the dedication and hard work of its founder. The developer mindset throughout its life has also played a huge part in its ability to succeed with so little resources. Tibor is obsessed with simplicity. With each new line of code, we're adding maintenance burden for years to come. Compatibility with the rest of the site, with the mobile app. Migrations through new libraries and language versions. Refactoring the code itself. Redesigning the UI it is a part of. The new line of code will need to be revisited many times. Adding time and risk to every code modification that affects it. Lines of code are not valuable. They are a cost that is not paid while writing them, but while maintaining them, sometimes years later, and they pile up. Adding lines of code to a program is like adding weight to an airplane. It better be worth it. This simplicity, which is prevalent throughout the entire program, is a key to its success. The developer isn't trying to shove as many features as possible into the code base, but trying to grow it in a sustainable way. Tech debt is the biggest frustration for developers, according to the Stack Overflow Developer Survey this year. But Leeches has very little of it. Since there is no product team, there is no one to push back on doing things right the first time around, or going back and fixing past issues. I didn't shy away from changing parts of a stack I didn't like, even when it took weeks or months. It's one of the props of a project led by its developer. There was no one to tell me that something is more important than clearing away tech debt. Reading and listening to Tibor, it is so evident that he is one of the most humble people you could meet. In a field that is often governed by hot heads and strong opinions, he is a breath of fresh air. He is an extremely hardworking programmer who could be making much more money by working on a for-profit project. But he chooses to work on Lee Chess and pays himself a very modest salary because money is not important. He is happy doing what he loves and traveling the world. This is perhaps the best lesson to learn from Lee Chess. There is more to life than working at Fang or selling your startup. There is so much joy to be had on working on your craft and making delightful products, even at the cost of potentially more money. It would be a disservice to Tibor and to Leeches if I didn't mention the open source identity of the platform. Openness is perhaps the core value of Leeches. The product was open source from day one, and the first features were implemented after Tibor communicated with a user who stumbled onto his hobby project. There is no bigger goal to take your money or sell your data or even show you ads. Leeches 
guess it's just a great product because building great products is rewarding for its author. There are many possible lessons to be learned from studying Tibor and Lee Chess, and I hope to learn a lot from this incredibly impressive project. Here are some of my personal takeaways. Simplicity. It's important to be afraid of features. Code is a necessary evil, and the best code is no code at all. Great programmers do less, less of everything. Fewer dependencies, fewer features, fewer lines, fewer abstractions, fewer patterns. When one of the smallest JavaScript frameworks started growing in complexity, they moved to an even smaller and more flexible framework. He regrets using the play framework because it has too many features he doesn't need. And when he migrates, he does it correctly and completely. Minimizing tech debt is much more important than exploring new features. Do it right the first time or take the time to do it right the second. There's nothing more dangerous than growing tech debt. I've been a part of many projects where there is a legacy service that everyone refuses to touch. But don't live with tech debt. Fix it before it slows you down to a crawl. Don't mess with the front end. Keep it as minimal as possible and move as much logic as possible to the back end. JavaScript is dangerous. UX is more important than UI. Be deliberate about which features go where and don't add features that do not have a logical place in the UI. Database technologies need to be robust and scalable. But other than that, don't stress too much about what you use. Use something that is tried and tested and stick with it. Don't overcomplicate things. Tooling. At the end of the day, it's important to use the right tool for the right job. A functional high level language like Scala is a great tool for a massive code base with lots of moving parts. A low level performant language like Rust is perfect for smaller services that need to go fast. You need to use tools you're comfortable with, but you also need to be ready to step out of your comfort zone if massive gains are up for grabs. It would have taken the Leechess team much more time to optimize Scala enough to match Rust's performance than to just write these smaller services in Rust. It's also important to let the tools make your life easier long term. Tibor chooses tools that work for him. By using static typing and functional paradigms, he moves as much of the complexity to compile time as possible, freeing him to think about the actual problems. Tibor expects that he will make mistakes and plans accordingly. A common thing he says is that his job is to fix yesterday's bugs and create new bugs or features for tomorrow. I love this mindset. I don't think he's relinquishing responsibility, but he expects that mistakes will happen and is ready to fix them when they do. No one writes perfect code. So be patient with yourself and try to set yourself up to fix bugs quickly. Lifestyle. Status, rank, and salary aren't as important as the value you're delivering and how happy you are in life. Improve your craft, not because it will get you promoted, but because it's fun to create things. And when you do create things, don't be afraid to share them with the world. Don't be greedy with your talents. Software is built on openness, and the more we collaborate, the more cool things we can create. The last thing I want to do is plug the Lee Chess Patreon. Their website is completely open and funded by donations. Tibor deserves every cent, but he's capped his salary so low that most donations will go towards building a better product anyway. Thanks for watching.